I'm going to read this poem that I wrote. Thanks. Yeah. It's called Onion. So I'm like an onion. I've got a lot of layers. So let me pull back the husks of my heart like bird cages. And the first layer is a story. When I was just learning how to read, the first book that I picked up was Moby Dick. <laughs> and I read it for like a month straight. I put so many hours into that book. I'd get so absorbed in the world of Captain Ahab that I wouldn't hear when people called my name. And when I finished it, I was so proud of myself because I'd done it on my own. That was me. I had done it. And then later, I learned I'd read the children's classic version. A lot of white space and a lot of pictures and not a lot of the original text. So I still haven't read Moby Dick. <laughs> <laughs> the second layer is you. You're beautiful. You're great. And all of you have contributed into this layer with me. There's nobody who can write your name the way you do. There's nobody who has eyes that swirl the way yours do. Nobody whose tongue dances with their teeth the way that your mouth moves. And there's nobody whose thumbprint interprets the universe the way that yours does. The third layer is a sound. It's the sound that I mimic when I play guitar, or in the piece that I find when I play the ivories. It's the sound of rain falling in the forest, of pine trees in the wind in their eternal dance, and singing their thin harmony. And the fourth, the fourth is a whiteboard. Because I write my identity on a whiteboard, a big whiteboard with a lot of markers and just as many erasers because I put my hopes and dreams and wishes and everything that I think I am on that board so that I can erase it and replace it later with something better. And when I go into a classroom, if I'm there early enough, I like to draw big scrawling pictures across the whiteboards because even though I know they're impermanent, they'll give someone just a couple minutes of wonder. So this is casual, right? <laughs> yes, thank you, Philip. I love you. The birds flying from my chest don't bother you, do they? <laughs> The fifth layer is another story. When I was younger, a freshman in high school, ninth grade, me and a good friend of mine went hiking. And after two hours of climbing up and down mountains and exploring through forests, we came to a spot from my childhood, where a root protruded over a road like a river, and every heavy word we said crashed down to the cars below. And she showed her, me her scars, and I showed her mine, and we pushed them together. And from the freshest ones, just a little bit of blood oozed back and forth. And I didn't know how much I loved her until many years later. But every time I meet someone, it's still her image that's in my mind. And even though that story is over, a little bit of her blood still courses in my veins. The sixth layer is the sky. Because we weren't made to look down. God didn't make us to be downtrodden, but to look up at the stars and to realize the synapses in our brain are a map of the universe. That he designed the universe for us to look up at stargaze and look for him in all the spaces between the constellations and realize that he's not there, but that he's been right beside us the whole time. And the seventh layer is an onion. Because an onion, it's a little pungent. It's got kind of a funky smell, but you know it's there. It's present. It sticks out. And it's a lot like me, because I'm a little weird. I'm a little offbeat. I don't rhyme every word I say. But I'm here, and I'm present. And there's nobody who can say the words the way I say them. And there's nobody who can write the words I write. And there might be people who can do it better, but there's no one who can do it the same. And you know the best thing about onions? Is they're always growing more layers. Thank you.